Uh, my name is Piero Bass. I'm a cinematographer from Italy, but based in New York, and I'm the chair of the cinematography program at New York Film Academy, New York campus. Uh, Robbie Mueller, uh, this is David Lynch calling from Los Angeles. Robbie Mueller was an uh, early adopter of filming your life in real time. He was always going around with a video camera. He always had a Polaroid with him. He took photos, uh, large format photos sometimes. He was uh, really fascinated by anything that was imaged. And if you look at the book of Polaroids that has been published a few years ago, or the some abstract from these archivals, you realize that a lot of these uh, videos are not just documenting a vacation like uh, millions of tourists do in New York every day. It's really part of his research over the image. Like uh, Robbie Mueller was uh, desperately in love with light and desperately in love with image. And so everything was seen through the eye of the video camera. And so once the video cameras became smaller, we started to film in IH8 a bunch of different scenarios. There's a lot of shots of cars moving in New York when it was in New York shooting, the trains and landscape in other sides of America, Europe as well, there's a lot of these and on top of the photos that he was taking and, and so on. And so I feel like uh, certainly videos was not something unfamiliar to him. How we got to shoot video with Lars von Trier, I think it's a partially different story. Robbie Mueller for me has never looked like the director of photography that suddenly decides I want to be an innovator. Forget film, uh, video is the future. I'm going to be a pioneer of this technology like other directors out of DP have been. Ole. It is what it is. It feels like Robbie Mueller was using whatever method was uh, available to him to achieve the story that he wanted to tell. I feel like today, if he was shooting now, I can see him shooting with a cell phone. I can see him shooting in IMAX if that was the right format for the film. If he was working with Christopher Nolan, Nolan would have to adapt his style to his, but they would probably shoot IMAX happily and, and make a great film together. How we got to Lars von Trier, I think it's a different story. It's not, uh, again, the story of the pioneer that wanted to shoot video at all cost. I think uh, Von Trier chose Robbie Mueller because Robbie Mueller was uh, a director of photography that was not uh, forcing himself, always looking for the perfect shot, the beautiful shot, the perfect lighting, but was a director of photography able to understand when the light was right, and sometimes the light was right when it was not perfect. And in Breaking the Waves, the approach that Von Trier has is quite interesting. I remember Robbie talking to us at this masterclass in Italy about breaking the waves. And uh, basically what he says is like, I discussed with Von Trier about the film and Lars had a very clear idea of what he wanted to do with the film. And he said, Robbie, I want to shoot uh, on the coast of Scotland in a place that is incredibly beautiful. And every place so you put the camera, you'll get a great shot. And I want you to do the opposite. I want you to not make it look beautiful. I want you to frame centered. I want to shoot cinemascope, but I want the actor in the center. I want the perspective to be killed. I don't want to give you the audience the opportunity to linger on the background and enjoy the beautiful view, but I want always to concentrate on what the character is doing and uh, the emotional state of that character. If he doesn't take care of you and give you everything you need, I'll kill him. <laughs> and then, on top of that, the film is shot in 35 millimeter. The idea was we bring this beautiful 35 millimeter into video, we decolorate, we remove the blue channel so that everything becomes brown and okra, and then we print it back with the videograph, not even a Harry laser that we have today to print back from digital to film, but an older version that basically is a screen that is filmed by a 35 millimeter camera. We bring that back to film because of course at the time they had to edit back on film for you know screenings. And so this approach would terrify anybody because basically you have a director that is telling you, I want you to make a film where you're not going to get any glory from your lighting, from your framing. It's not about that. It's about uh, telling the story of this character. And that's such a desperate, dramatic story that you have to do it with that approach. If you look to the beauty of that place, uh, you would never believe that she goes through what she goes through. And you've never believed the ending that the film has, which is already unbelievable. But you believe it because uh, you have this uh, intense uh, realism and intense drama in the images and you feel like really there's no hope at a certain point. And then you start to feel that there is some hope, that maybe she was the only one that actually saw this hope. The fact that she believed it 
suddenly makes it real. And so this imperfect cinematography actually turns out to be, in my opinion, the perfect cinematography. Will you use it as an example of the perfection of the framing and colors and style? Probably not. Many other DP have better shot. Robbie Mueller himself has a bunch of other shots that are certainly better than that. But then any shot of Breaking the Waves is so perfectly timed to what the story is telling and so real, so natural. When Trier was shooting every shot, one take or two takes, no more, the operator was actually not aware of what the scene was. It was skipped out of the rehearsal, brought in only during the rehearsal, and apparently he had a radio, and Von Trier was telling him, pan right, pan left, look at her, look at him, in the middle of the take without really knowing what was happening. And that imperfection actually becomes a perfection once you put together the whole puzzle of the film. And, and that, I think, what is the most interesting part of the relationship with Von Trier. Dancer in the Dark is an extra step in that direction where they just decided that forget 35 millimeter, let's shoot video, let's go for the everyday shot, the everyday lighting, let's not make it beautiful in any way, let's just go for the substance and what really is in the story, which then becomes an incredibly beautiful film because you really feel it at the end.